For our optic, we're again using the primary arms SLX 1 to 6 Nova that gives you a red dot bright reticle in second focal plane, meaning the dot is huge in both 6x and 1x. I figured the Nova was perfect for this setup due to its ability to do fast, easy shots up close, while also being all right to take longer shots and zoom out to 6x. I thought that the Jackal would be so, so accurate, so I wasn't too worried about this huge red dot gummy everything up, but boy was I wrong. Here you can see what I'm saying with the red dot bright reticle. The folks crying for this feature likely don't realize what you're trading off. To make these shots, I'm basically filling the entire two inch red center of the target with a huge dot. Every time I take a shot, I'm actually laughing a little because I'm starting to see a crazy group that I'm making even with the dot covering up every single thing that I'm even aiming at. Hey wizards, I got one that came highly recommended by a ton of you that I finally got a chance to get my hands on and actually test out. Today we'll be looking at the PSA Jackal F5 EPT variant with the 13.7 pin and welded barrel in FDE. Now I know the Jackal's been out for a while and there's probably a ton of other reviews out there, but it seems like the whole platform has been getting a bunch of iterative improvements and upgrades as it's been going over time. I'll say even myself, I wasn't expecting the crazy accuracy that we got out of a long stroke piston system. That group definitely baffled me, but I also learned that having that huge two MOA red dot bright reticle that everybody seems to cry for <laughs> didn't make long range shooting easy at all. I'll explain it all to you and we we'll talk through it all, but first let's take a moment and thank today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored in part by HRT Tactical Gear. HRT provides cutting edge equipment from the next gen arc belt to the load bearing l back plate carrier to provide you with an assortment of high end gear to outfit the civilian defending their home all the way to the professional defending their country. HRT also has a brand new dump pouch and an all new medical pouch that we'll be showing you all soon that makes for a pretty awesome family for the whole arc belt suite. And as always, you can use discount code TLDCO over at hrttacticalgear.com. So big thanks to HRT for making this video possible and supporting the channel as much as they do. And I wanna also give a big shout out to Primary Arms for providing us with the SLX 1 to 6 Nova that we use for all of our optics testing today. Now let's move into this and let's talk about some of my potential biases when it comes to reviewing something from PSA and looking at the Jackal. Well, I will say that the TLD team does like PSA a lot. We talk to them a lot at SHOT Show, we get along with them, we like all the people there, and we really like what PSA does for the entire 2A community. We also do have an affiliate relationship with Palmetto State Armory, along with loving some caliber coffee, and also using a lot of AAC ammo in a lot of our pistol testing and some of our rifle testing also. So I will say that I'm probably pretty biased in favor of PSA. I also think they offer you some of the best cost to performance ratio on the market, and they did provide us this Jackal for testing. But I do have to send it back when we're done testing it, and I just think there's some things you just have to sacrifice when you make a more expensive piston system, but then also don't charge a billion dollars for it. I say that all to give you my regular spiel. I have a bias as all YouTubers do. I'm just upfront about it because I want you to watch other videos and other reviews besides just mine so that you can be the most educated consumer possible. I do highly recommend Elliot Delp's channel if you want another take at the Jackal from a more down to earth perspective. Elliot's pretty awesome too, I like him a lot. Now, there seems to be this pretty wild passion lately with piston guns, and with the Jackal, I'm learning there are some pretty distinct advantages you get when you move to some of those heavier piston platforms. The piston systems are definitely heavy though. I had to add a whole new category of weight just for this platform. But we'll see how that heavier weight comes into play as we can actually put more accurate shots on target faster much like we found with our heavier 2011 setups. So it's all pretty interesting. Now though, let's look at our current pistol rifle rankings. Comparing piston rifles, we only have the IWI Carmel that we enjoyed, but also found that its larger handguard and weight made it a tad confusing as to what role it was trying to fill exactly. I'll be honest, I think we're gonna see the same thing today and I think it's gonna echo through all the piston systems as we have a shorter overall system that <laughs> seems like it kicks ass at long range and faster shots. 
It's a little confusing because moving quickly to get those fast shots is, is a lot more effort though. Let's just get into it though by going over the Jackal from head to toe and reviewing all the features of it. Then we'll hit the range and test it all out. Starting with the muzzle device, we went with the version with the chemo adapter so we could test the Jackal with the can and see how hard it was to use all the gas adjustment settings. The muzzle device is a JMAC Customs GFCHE something something or other. I, I, don't, I don't know why the name is so long. The muzzle device also comes pin and welded to our barrel since it also uses a full size ACR style stock. Good thing too, God, that whole rifle would be really scary if the muzzle device was removable. I swear, the, the goofy laws, they just don't make any sense. They just, they just don't. The included barrel is a one in seven twist 4150 chrome molly steel barrel. I've had a couple people who commented when we did a little bit of teaser footage of the Jackal that they wish the barrel was chrome lined and I can see the advantages of that because adding that chrome line would mean the barrel would have a lot more life and having this unique piston system would mean changing out a barrel in this would be a complete pain in the ass. But I did find the barrel was dumb accurate as it is and you don't really need to have a chrome line barrel unless this was like your go to war gun. I think the weight of the Jackal would make that an odd choice similar to the ACR that just went absolutely nowhere. So I like that PSA kind of leaned more into the accuracy side of things. Now, I also did the halvesy handguard in order to save some weight up front. Because I'll tell you, weight savings needs to be a top priority when you're looking at this setup. The shorter handguard also gives us easier access to the gas adjustment. Some folks have said the gas adjustment could be hard to move, but mine was quite the opposite and made for easy adjustments. Adding in our Sandman K, I could easily click and adjust to get full lockback and the correct ejection pattern without any sort of hassle. And then I could swap it back if I removed the can or I could increase pressure to get extra gas if I needed it. I do wish the gas system had some sort of markings on it. I have no way of knowing if I have it in like the suppressed or unsuppressed settings unless I put like chalk marks somewhere of, of which setting each one was and then try to line it up. But why there's nothing marked there, I don't know. I just end up having to like turn it backwards and then count to like five for 55 grain, like AAC 55, and then count to like nine for my suppress setting. I had to do that pretty much every single time I picked it up though, because I never knew if I left it in the gas or the unsuppressed setting. So it would be pretty awesome if they could put some sort of markings on there and you could tell what was what just by looking at it quickly. Moving further down the handguard, we see the M-lock version of the Jackal monolithic upper. Monolithic meaning the entire upper is one piece of metal. This means you can place large illuminators or items on the end of the rifle without worrying about it bending or losing zero like bendy bill handguards. Adding more weight to the end of this though, well, Arnold, it'll be a wonderful workout. The attached M-lock lower section is a great size though and makes for easy C-clamp grip onto the top of the rail. This section is a chunky girl though, and you can see where some refinements to weight can definitely be made. I would assume that's something PSA is working on, but just looking at the Jackal, I'd say that's kind of an overall theme for me right now. It's all just put together and executed well, but it really needs that extra level of refinement and finishing just to really dominate that whole piston weapon system class. And in that vein, you also see the Jackal is a full long stroke piston system. So we also see the ambidextrous knurled side charging handle that I swapped over to the right side. So can you swap sides? Yes. Is it also slightly annoying to do? <laughs> also yes. Another interesting bit is that we don't have a dust cover on this platform, similar to the original ACR design. Going by how loud people cry in the comments, the, the lack of a dust cover is probably why the ACR failed. I mean, everyone's dad seems to know a firearm's worst enemy is <laughs> dust. The bolt carrier covers the whole chamber, so it works well to prevent debris from entering in this area. I will say I understand how it helps in that angle, but again, we get into refinement as we now have a very, very large, heavy block of metal. This is just another part that I would refine on this platform, like rounding out the corners or, or taking off some excess metal, as currently it's just this monster chunk of a thing. Now I'm being a bit extreme, but this thing is pretty huge. And if you're wondering if it's easy to reinstall, yeah, that's a no. Now the piston design does allow for some wild changes as the spring system is now contained in the upper. 
This means we can use a standard lower, but connecting a stock in a more unique way, allowing for folding stocks like this F5 that allows the firearm to fire without the stock impacting operation in any way. I'm not gonna lie to you. I certainly have a love-hate relationship with that stock though. Like I like how it looks and what it does, but actually using it is a tad bit frustrating. Like here, I'll show you. To fold the stock over, you press this button, but you can't just press it. You gotta jam your thumb into the slot to get it to release. The stock is also adjustable, but you gotta press the button on both sides, hold, hold it kinda like this so you can smash in both sides and then it'll start to move and you gotta, you gotta kinda fight with it. Okay, there we go. There's also a riser here that you can push backwards to unlock, then you can pop it up and push it back forwards to lock it back in place again. So from first glance, it looks like this cool stock can just transform into a ton of different positions. But you gotta learn it as it can be really tricky. And that, that riser, uh, I don't recommend using that at all. I put a lot of weight into my stock, particularly when I'm laying down prone. Now, with the riser all angled like that, it means when the rifle reciprocates, it just jams my teeth into my skull, and it's just a, it's just a wonderful experience. So yeah, love-hate with the stock, and again, for like the third time, we see a spot where PSA could make some refinements to the original ACR design that really just didn't work and didn't take off, and they can turn it into something better, like making the riser that actually rises in the back and the front so it doesn't smash your face into bits. Now, from our lower, we see something genius as in our BRN 180 setup. The Jackal uses a standard mil-spec lower. Included in our setup is a mag pull grip, standard mag release and standard mil-spec safety, some really nice takedown pins, along with an enhanced polished mil-spec trigger. What I really like about this is we could easily upgrade the trigger if we wanted to or add in a ambi mag release because it's just using a standard mil spec lower. The normal configuration is just pretty basic, but I think that's kind of perfect and pretty intentional because it's easy to upgrade and we'd all have different things that we'd customize it into anyway. I will say I am dying to throw an elf SE trigger on this, but I'm doing my best to just test it all out without changing anything. For our optic, we're again using the primary arms SLX 1-6 Nova that gives you a red dot bright reticle in second focal plane, meaning the dot is huge in both 6X and 1X. I figured the Nova was perfect for this setup due to its ability to do fast, easy shots up close, while also being all right to take longer shots and zoom out to 6X. I thought that the Jackal would be so, so accurate, so I wasn't too worried about this huge red dot gumming everything up, but boy was I wrong absolutely turn off these red dot bright reticles that you guys just seem like you absolutely have to have as it makes long range shooting a ton more difficult. And if you have it off, you can actually aim and see that the Jackal can do some pretty amazing stuff. I think that's a good segue too, now that we've looked at the whole Jackal from head to toe, let's head out to the range and do some testing. So the first thing I did was zero at 50 meters. Yeah, meters is where I'm at. And then shot a five shot group at 100 meters and <laughs> Yes, I actually zeroed correctly this time. Here you can see what I'm saying with the red dot bright reticle. The folks crying for this feature likely don't realize what you're trading off. To make these shots, I'm basically filling the entire two inch red center of the target with a huge dot. Every time I take a shot, I'm actually laughing a little because I'm starting to see a crazy group that I'm making even with the dot covering up every single thing that I'm even aiming at. I really think this footage tells a great story about why red dot bright is not a priority for scope makers who want precision. But in the end, I could tell that the Jackal made a pretty stupid good group, even with the dot clogging it all up. Maybe finally now after seeing this, our is it red dot bright guys will finally realize that's not actually what you want at all. Now, <laughs> this was pretty amazing as our 100 meter accuracy turned out to be like, 0.6 MOA. Yeah, 0.6 MOA from a Jackal. So now we know it can shoot and that it's accurate, but let's do some more tests and do the weight test next. All right, so it's not really a weight test. I guess it's more like an agility test that I'm kind of changing it into, like how fast you can move with the whole weapon system. Our Jackal setup that didn't even include lights or lasers or anything came in at a hefty 10 pounds, seven ounces. Here at up downs, it felt slow and sluggish. I could get there and get it done, but it took significant effort. I got more used to my 10 pound buddy after more rounds, 
but I was also enjoying a nice workout at this point. Swapping over to multi-target, we started to see something interesting though, as it was still more effort to move, but the added weight of the weapon system was significantly cutting recoil and making it easier to stay on target. So while I was able to stay more accurate overall on target, it was harder to move faster when swapping between targets. The agility test does a really good job too of showing you the trade-offs you're making with pretty much all the piston weapon systems we've seen so far. Unilaterally across all the piston systems we've seen, there's more weight and more mass, particularly on the front end of the weapon system, meaning it's gonna be a lot slower and harder to move between targets, but it probably will result in a flatter shooting system. And that leads us nicely into the next test of overall shooting feel and recoil. From a shooting feel and recoil standpoint, now the Jackal stayed on target, but it seemed to actually have more felt recoil than a standard AR-15 platform. I felt like I was getting knocked around a bit more than normal, and again, it just required more effort to keep the system controlled and on target. Not saying it wasn't possible or horrible at all, I just had to put in a lot more effort, and the increased felt recoil was notable. Doing some range drills and just testing out the Jackal, the extra effort really, I don't know, isn't anything notable, but using the Jackal for a long period of time, there's no doubt about it, you're definitely gonna get tired a whole lot quicker, which you know, goes back to our chrome line barrel thing, makes it an odd go to war choice. But let's move into the next test though, and let's move into controls. Unlike our Carmel setup, the Jackal charging handle wasn't super tight and was very easy to actuate and use. The Jackal, using a standard mil-spec lower, means the controls were perfectly fine out of the box, making for an easy-to-use bolt release, mag release, and safety that was all clean. I could improve the controls easily with some ambi parts and make this lower just fantastic if I wanted to do that. But I really do like how it's left to me to upgrade, and one thing I would add is probably one of those HRF, RCM, the magwell funnels, because those things are just absolutely awesome. Plus, HRF has saved me from quite a few bumbling reloads. Redeem. All right, next test is mag drop. And this was a non-issue because again, the Jackal just uses a standard mil-spec lower. No special polymer lower or proprietary anything here. The standard lower is proven and mags all did just fine. All right, what's next then? Oh, the trigger. now. Mil-spec triggers aren't generally my favorite and you could easily swap this out, but let's see without changing anything, just what you get, just taking the Jackal straight out of the box. First round, I had to remember the long mil-spec trigger reset and it tripped me up a bit. I did eventually get it cleaned up and worked into some faster rounds as I got used to the normal mil-spec trigger. It's mil-spec, it's fine. You can still train to shoot it fast. Now, can I shoot it as fast as the Elf Apex on my night vision setup? Well, no, but we could also throw that into this setup, but I did find the enhanced polish trigger works just fine once I kind of practiced and trained with a normal mil-spec trigger again. I don't really think the enhanced polish trigger needs to be upgraded if you don't want to. It still did just fine, and I was able to shoot it pretty fast as it was. Now, let's move into the next test, which is accuracy. Now, we've already shown this thing can do some pretty stupid groups at 100 meters, so let's stretch it out and see what it can do. I took the Jackal out to 300 meters and cleaned up the targets nicely to just hit the gong repeatedly. Then we stepped up to 400 meters and again cleaned that target easily. Then we rounded out with 600 meters and it was the same with slapping steel all day with hitting target after target with ease. Oh, for, for accuracy, I didn't tell you about the ammo. For this bit and for the 100 meter part, we're using AAC 77 grain, the SMK. So it's some pretty good ammo that we're actually using today. The accuracy really did surprise me both at the 100 meter and now that we've stretched it out, I was pretty much hitting every single target I was aiming at. And I also did take some velocity readings if you wanna see those. I'll overlay the numbers from our Garmin Zero so you can see what we were getting and our spread in different velocities. All right, though, the Jackal is doing really well in terms of accuracy and rapid shots, which is interesting, but let's move into a little bit more of a fun category and do the cool factor test. Now, here the Jackal just shines. It looks unique and fills that ACR at home meme so well, giving you similar feature sets at an affordable price. With the cool side folding stock, small features cut into the monolithic upper, you have a firearm that just grabs your attention when you see it. 
like the Carmel, it's certainly a rifle that you see and you're like, hey, hey, what's that? That's awesome. And I definitely had four or five people ask me about the Jackal when we are at the range and kind of telling some stories about it and how it compares to the ACR. So it's definitely a conversation maker. I actually finally looked it up and I realized the ACR uses that exact same stock. Someone please sound off in the comments if it's the same horrible finicky design as this one though. All right, I got off on a tangent. Now let's go into our last category of comparative market. Looking at piston systems, here PSA just clobbers the competition. You can find the Jackal far cheaper than other piston systems on the market, and this is what PSA is known for. PSA is the literal leader of putting weapon systems in people's hands without charging them $3,000 for a rifle. It's gonna make a bunch of people angry, but you're really just not gonna get something that's two to three times the value of this just because you pay two to three times more. It's just, yeah, be angry about it, but that's the truth of it. So comparative market, yeah, the Jackal is just the shining star of PSA really showing the market how things should be done and how to sell the consumers without ripping them off. Now though, that's all of our tests, that's all of our Jackal, so let's see how this thing does and take a look at our piston ranking chart and see where the Jackal ended up. Now, even with old girl's big bones, the insane accuracy and overall coolness of the Jackal pushed it up the list to put this rifle in first place on our chart. The Jackal just nails it where it matters to give you a great platform that doesn't break the bank while also being able to just work with an accuracy that'll impress your friends. Here, I'll also overlay a stat chart I started doing so you can see the attributes of the Jackal and how I thought it performed. As I said earlier, I think the Jackal could go into this like untouchable status if they did a little bit of revision and tweaking of the weight and overall design to just balance out the whole platform. Overall, I was pretty impressed by how the Jackal did, particularly in the accuracy. And again, I wanna thank Primary Arm for supplying us with this optic for our Jackal setup with the SLX 1-6 Nova. And hopefully we can try out the new PLX Nova that's coming out later on this year. All right though, one of the things I do need all of you guys to do is to sound off in the comments as to what piston rifles you guys wanna see next. I've kinda got my eyes on the Galil Ace from IWI, but you all let me know. The SPR does kinda have my heart, but it would be interesting to test the accuracy versus the Jackal. But I hope this review of the PSA Jackal was useful in your purchasing decisions. I wanna say thanks to all of our Patreon members and all our YouTube supporters. You guys make it possible we can test all these rifles, do all this cool stuff, and man, like I always say, I just love the cool community that we all have. And I wanna say thanks to everyone that likes, comments, and subscribes. Comment down below what you think about piston systems and if you think it's the future. I wanna hear about it. All right, everyone, flush out. I'm surprised, like I really am legitimately surprised that the ACR even got close to coming out on the market without having a dust cover. Oh, do you know how, you know how much sleep a lot of people would have lost if that would have been their weapon system? Just imagine all that dust that could have gotten in there. But on all seriousness, I, I really did like the Jackal. It really did impress me a lot in terms of the accuracy going out and shooting. Like that group, like seeing the big stupid red dot covering the whole target, like I'm just looking at the footage and then just looking at the reticle and I'm like, why? Why are people thinking they want this? Like, oh, I want it to be red dot bright. Like, okay, that's what you get, bud. You get a big two MOA dot on a scope. Is that what you want? No, it's not because that's dumb. Anyway, I had a good time. Uh, Piston weapon systems, let's keep doing some more. I think that's it. Okay, everybody, I'm gonna go work on stuff. I think helmets, oh, optics, I got some cool, we have like a million red dot optics. I'm gonna review all this. All right, everybody, take care, get out of here.